Bottom line. Amen. Welcome to New Testament Christian Church on a beautiful fall day. I know this is a little bit cooler than usual and, and a little bit windy. Uh, maybe the wind just blew you into the church like Kathleen said. <laughs> but you know what? I, I do love this time of year. I love that transition. And uh, sometimes we don't like those first, first uh, cold days that are dipping into the 50s, into the 40s. And and there's uh, uh, some transition. But you know what? I'm glad for what the Lord has given us. This is a day that the Lord has made, and I will be glad and rejoice in him. Why don't we just stand and lift up our hands, worship him. Let us invite the Lord into this service. Mighty God, we love you and adore you. We actually invite you into this service we actually invite you and give you full permission to have your way in our lives and our prayer is that every soul every need and every man and individual will be met spiritually in the precious wonderful name of jesus and the church says Very first song we're going to sing, I need you to help me sing. I am thine, O Lord. I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms. 
great big uh, clap offering. He's worthy of our praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory and all the praise. And the church said, you may be seated. And again, we want to give you a warm welcome to the house of the Lord. And you may, uh, we, uh, for the very first time, we've turned on the heaters for so that you can be warm and comfortable. And I know it's a little, just a little tinge, a little cooler, but we're grateful for what God has given, grateful yeah. for fall and going into a new season. And, and I love new seasons because there's something new and God has something in store for us. Yeah. And again, we give you a great big welcome to be in the house of the Lord. At this time, we would like to do our offering. Amen. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Pastor, can you pray? Father, we're so grateful, Lord, to be back in the house of God. Grateful, Lord, that we get to take our Thanksgiving. We ask that you receive our offering. Bless us and multiply us. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. We all come, we want to sincerely thank you for your giving and that may, that God would sincerely bless you and meet all your needs, whether it's physically, spiritually, emotionally, and may every need be met to you by our loving Savior, Jesus Christ. And we thank you for your giving. May God continue to bless you. Uh, I want us, uh, 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 sister's going to sing before pastor will be coming to preach the word. And uh, this is a, a group participation. And sister will be singing. Uh, it's a great song. It's called God's Wonderful People. So why don't we just stand in uh, anticipation and we'll help her sing that song. Okay, okay.
about that going to heaven and, and, and just being in those few, those uh, 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 early moments, just being with the saints in that precious fellowship with God and just loving everybody and just knowing what Jesus Christ is going to do. It is a good and precious feeling looking forward to heaven. Amen. Amen. Come on, man. I know you guys are comfortable because I'm about to faint. I'm about to. I'm warm blooded. I guess you guys are cold blooded. I don't know. Whew. It's toasty. But the thrill is uh, just being here with all of God's wonderful people. And I want you to know how precious you are. Uh, I really appreciate the faithfulness. See, a lot of times people don't, don't. I, I don't know. It seems like we've lost our way as a people. Our kids, are, they start stirring. They're like, hey, hey, we get to go now. Okay, you go now, kids. Go. Come on. Sunday school. Sunday school. Go have fun. Have a good time. Learn something. I will be quizzing. There is a test afterwards. So often we've forgotten about the faithfulness that's required. We all have to be faithful. We have to be faithful to our spouse. We have to be faithful to our family. But we have to be faithful to our Lord and, and to our church. And I just appreciate the faithfulness of men and women. Amen. And God's been good to us. My Bible reading is found in the book of Matthew. That's that first uh, uh, chapter, first book in the New Testament. And God knows what he's doing. He gave me this special message. I'm reading out of chapter 5. Beginning to read at verse 14. Jesus is speaking. My letters are red. That's a clue, right? Jesus is speaking. Jesus is speaking and he says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. My text this morning is Matthew 5, verse 16. He says, let your light so shine. Reverend Tessio sang that song this morning. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. He says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. This morning I want to preach on a message entitled, Is Your Light On? Is your light on? Reverend Atencio, would you stand and pray, please? Yes. Is your light on? You know, you used to be kind of safe. Y'all remember when you'd be driving around and the, the day turns into dusk and it's getting ready to go into the evening and get ready to be dark outside. And perhaps you're driving and you don't have one of these newfangled vehicles where the headlights come on automatically and all. And you're just riding around just forgetting that it's time to turn on your headlights. And somebody rides by you and goes, Toot, toot, or they flick their lights at you and say, hey, turn your lights on. You know, now they say, well, you have to be careful because uh, gangs use that and, and then they come and shoot you if you turn. <laughs> and that's how the world is. But I like the fact that we can check each other and say, hey, are you, is your light on? <laughs> I'm talking about, hey, because sometimes we forget I'm a child of God. Now, it, it, 
there are times when you don't even realize how much people are paying attention to you. I go to the dry cleaners. I'm coming to drop off my things. And my, this is the week that my wife had gotten really sick. She was in the hospital. We had the grandkids. It was just so much going on. And I was just running errands. I was just trying to get back so I can get home and, and lay down and, and get a little bit of sleep and get back to the hospital and take care of my wife, right? I go to the dry cleaners. I have my mask on, okay? She can't see facial expression. I go in, I, I drop my stuff off, and I, as I'm leaving, she said, are you okay? And I said, yes. She said, oh, you, you just don't seem like your normal, cheerful self. I guess my light wasn't on. And I was like, wow. She noticed. Is your light on? See, can you hide a city that's sitting on top of a mountain? Can you, can you hide that, that, uh, that hill over there? Uh, 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 what is it? Sandias? <laughs> you can't hide it. Everywhere you look, it's like, oh, it's right there. It's, right. it's, not, it's not going anywhere. It's always visible. It's a light at night. I don't care how low it is, it could be seen for miles. Folks can look and say, oh, that, you know. If you're lost in the woods, go to the lights. When you start seeing the city lights, you know people are over there. The foxes don't need lights, okay? <laughs> the, the, the animals in the field, they don't need. But you go toward the lights. And God is trying to get us to understand. When we hide our light, you say, Pastor, how do we hide our light? How do we hide our light? One is by being quiet when we should be speaking. When we should be telling somebody, uh-uh, my God is real. When you see somebody, when they're down and out, when you see someone who's really struggling, and they don't, they, they look this far, like that lady looked at me and saw something was different about them. We need to speak up and say, hey, are you all right? I remember me and Brother Deuce, we were in Walmart, and it was a young lady just in the aisle stocking the shelves. And, and you could tell she was just, it was a robotic thing. This is, this is my job. But her mind was somewhere else, and we just began to talk to her, and she opened up, and she was just going through so much, and we prayed with her in the aisles. When we hide our light, we miss an opportunity to shine in someone else's life. We got to speak when we see that. Going along with the crowd. Everybody else is cursing and carrying on. I don't want to look like a stick in the mud. Call me the stick. <laughs> Call me that one. I'm going to silence all the foolishness. Amen. What about denying the light? Letting sin dim your light. I'm telling you, people are watching us and, and understanding that we have to explain our light to others. People think that, well, Pastor Hicks, he's just a jolly old fellow. <laughs> no, Jesus gave me this light. Jesus gave me this joy. <laughs> and number six, ignoring the needs of others. God gave us a light for a reason. He said in Ephesians, Paul writing, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now ye are light in the Lord. Walk ye as children of light. How many times have we stopped and thought about that? God gave me a responsibility. i got to share this light. So here Jesus is talking to his disciples as he's been given this uh, uh, this speech and is like a, 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 a amphitheater. And he's got this huge audience and he's out there and he's sharing with them this kingdom message and, and they're listening because they've never heard 
words like this before. He was really explaining the word of God in a different way for them that they could grasp it and rightly apply it to their lives. Jesus says, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. And you know, as you begin to listen to this, uh, you imagine this crowd, there's this, this a group of Jews, and they're all in there in a multitude, and they've been sitting in the synagogue, and they've been reading and hearing the laws of Moses and, and understanding that there's a, a Christ to come, and, and Jesus is literally the one they're looking for, and he's teaching them, and it is drawing their hearts. They're like, man, this man has powerful words, and this is awesome, and, and they're really sucking it in. But they're not really understanding who he is yet. But we know. We know, and so we understand this is some important stuff. Our light must shine. I'm talking about we have to let the world see that we're no longer the same. We've been changed. We've been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. And as they see our good works, they'll realize, hey, Robert's different now. Hey, Maria, she's sweeter now. What happened? How did she get back? Where did she go? Say, oh, well, I, I, I go to a new church. Well, what's going on in your church? What's different? I met Jesus. I met Jesus. We have to understand that. What is, you know, we have to understand that our relationship is between me and God, right? But I have to share it with the world. It's not just about me and God and, and, hey, every man for himself. That's not what God desires. He wants us to share it. He wants us to let the world know how real he is. It, it's up to us to, to worship him in the sight of men that they might long to do what we're doing. They want to understand, well, how does Chris have joy every day? How does Chris, come on, doesn't her knees hurt? My knees hurt. Her knees hurt, but she still praises God. And there's a difference. We can sit and whine and complain. Can I get a witness? Or we can get up and say, he's good anyhow. Because he's kept me. He's leading me. He's guiding me. He says, ye are the light. You literally illuminate a room. You should be the brightness in someone's day. The sun and the moon are in the heaven. You think about that. We think about uh, who wants to sit in a dark house all day long? A dark and dingy, it's going to be fall, winter's going to come, and next thing you know, we'll be walking in with those uh, big old puffy coats and things like that. And you say, well, man, that's kind of doomy and gloomy. But the sunshine in the morning. You got to open your curtains and let the sun in. Because it, it does. It brings joy in your heart. You know, uh, I couldn't imagine living in uh, Alaska and those, those parts of the country where they have 20 hours of darkness. I, uh, if you, oh, man. I, mean, I, I couldn't take it because... I mean, I, I, my wife didn't like it up in, in uh, Seattle, the, the cloudiness, and it, it just it wears down on you. And that's why we really know we need the light. Well, we understand that we ought to be carrying our light. We ought to be sharing our light. And, and, and you know, he said we're sharing our light not just here, not just in our city, but everywhere we go. And we're sharing it in a way that they can understand this is not just me. I, I didn't just turn over a new leaf in life. But I've been changed by him. I've been transformed. I'm a new person. See, they, they, they understood this, but they, they didn't really comprehend it. Daniel wrote 
in Daniel chapter 12. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn to many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. If we are wise, we're going to help men and women see what we got. When was the last time you showed somebody, hey, we got a church. Hallelujah. We got a church. Here's a church card. Won't you come? Let God change your life. Let him give you some joy. He says, hey, because we don't light a candle. This is a light. And then put it down. I can't see, Pastor. We can't hear you either. Okay, here it is. It's back. We don't do that. We, we light the candle and we set it up so it can shine in the room. We light it so that we can see. It's a lamp. And during their times, they didn't have candles, literally. They weren't burning candles for light, but they had lamps, and, and, and they were using these lanterns. And Jesus was just trying to get them to understand that we have a light. And we have a light that can illuminate, that can show people the darkness. You know, if you sit in the dark long enough, you get night vision, right? You'd be able to acclimate. You can see. And you get used to that. The devil wants us to leave people in darkness. But if you've ever been in the military, remember going on bivouac, Reverend Atencio, and they tell you to keep your lights out, keep the, don't, don't light, light any matches and things like that because they don't want to ruin your night vision. They want you to be able to acclimate to the darkness so that you can see a little bit further. But what about when you come into a world that is lost and on its way to hell? What about when you see people that are trampling over one another? I mean, we look around and our world is just hateful. People are cruel to one another. They see a, a woman struggling on the street and they knock her down even further. Or, or they steal what she's trying to pick up instead of helping her. It, it, it's so sad. It's so disheartening. But we have to let our light shine to, that they might understand that that's not the way we ought to live. We ought to be willing to step in and help somebody. We ought to be willing to show them that God still is real. See what the Lord said of John? He said, he was a burning and a shining light. Hallelujah. Our lives should be just like that. On fire for Jesus. On fire that the world might know God is real. He's real and he's able to help you if only you'd come to him. If only you surrender. He says, so let your light. Well, Pastor, I, I only got one of those little, remember those flick uh, cigarette lighters they used to have? Just a flick? You remember David? David Jack? I still got a little flick. <laughs> those little lighters they, they used to, now my, my grandfather, he used to have that cigarette lighter, those big ones. You had to take the pot out and pour some oil in it and poof, you had a Big old real cigarette lighters. But God gave us a light. Be it little or large, it still can illuminate. Remember, remember those little Christmas bulb lights? In your dark house, you turn that little light on, it illuminates, right? And you know, when the light comes on, he says the darkness can't overtake it. We got to keep the light on, brothers and sisters. We got to let our light shine and shine before men so that it will be evident and apparent unto them where the light came from. This light didn't come from me hanging out at Walmart. It didn't come from me uh, drinking at the bar, but it came from me meeting a man named Jesus one day. It came from him touching my life in such a way that I was transformed. I became a new person. He gave me a new heart, and all of a sudden I had joy like never before. 
See, Peter described it this way. He says, but ye, ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. That ye should show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's what the responsibility we have of shining our light or showing our light, displaying it to a lost and dying world. Because we are special. Because we do have this light in us. Well, Pastor, I don't know. My light's going out. Plug in. We're recharging some batteries over there. The red light on is saying it's charging it up. We don't let the batteries die before we recharge them. Don't let your spiritual light die before you recharge it. Why not come and say, God, hey, let's stoke this fire. Come on, Lord, uh, I, I want some more joy. I want some more peace. I want some more happiness. I want to share. So sometimes, I'm, I'm just going to tell you straight. Sometimes we're not happy because we're keeping all the joy in ourselves. We forget about the joy of sharing. The joy of witnessing to someone else. The joy of sacrifice. What are you talking about? What, what are you talking about? I'm talking about when you share what you have. I, I don't have a lot, but what I have, I'm willing to share. Because God, that's, that's, that's our way of literally shining light into someone else's life. When they see that you're willing to give up what you have for them, they say, who does that? Remember that peculiar people? That royal priesthood? That's what children of light do. Because we've been changed. We're no longer the same. And we see someone struggling. We see someone hurting. We see someone just lost. It compels us to get out and do what we can to help them. I went to 1 John chapter 1. We're still talking about, is your light on? He says, this then is the message which ye heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. If ye say ye have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if ye walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Oh, hallelujah. If we walk in the light. Wait a minute. Pastor, you said we are the light. Yes, we are. But Jesus is the greatest light. Amen. Amen. He, he's the light that you say when we get to heaven, there'll be no need of the sun. For the Lord, the Lord is going to illuminate. It, just being in the presence of God is light enough. Can I get a witness? Just being in the presence of God. And so he, I, he wants us to understand that light represents what is good, what is pure, what is true, holy, and reliable. I told you, when you, you're lost in the woods, when you're lost somewhere, and you, you can't find your way out, if you can see the light, Know that the light is there where people are, right? They, they, they don't run electric wires out there just in the wilderness <laughs> will-nilly, right? <laughs> They'll just, hey, hey, let's, let's light this, this path in the woods. Uh, the bears get lost sometimes. No, no, they don't. It's where we are. And so people should be able to say, man, there's Jim. I see him. I see his light. I'm going to go to him for help. Oh, there's Kathleen. I'm, I'm going to go. Oh, JP, can you help me? I'm going through this. See, because if our light is on, people can recognize, they can come to you. And, I mean, but sometimes we, we darken it. We allow our lights to go dim, and, and now the world can't see. They think that darkness is everywhere. 
And see, darkness, it represents sinful and evil things. It, re it resembles the loneliness that seems to be engulfing the hearts and minds of men and women nowadays. The statement that God is light means that God is perfect. He's holy. He's true. And he alone can guide us through the darkness of sin and bring us out of that darkness. Only God can do that. And if he's done it for you, why not lead someone else to that? Why not show someone else just how real he is? See, light is also related to truth because it exposes whatever exists. Can I get a witness? Because when the lights come on, you, you can't hide that scar. Well, I, I put a little makeup on. They won't know. They, it's okay. Nobody knows. But when the light's on, I don't care how much you make it up. I don't care how much you try to cover it up. It begins to be revealed. And we try to hide it. But God says, if you're walking in the light, the light's going to. You see how you have to see the little sweat on me, can't you? <laughs> that's my glow. Sister, Chris, that's my glow. <laughs> that's my light shining. So, no, it's just sweat. <laughs> But you can see it. Nothing can be hid in the light. Sometimes well, they turn the lights down low. That's why you, when you go to the nightclub, they're not <laughs> bright. They're dark. They're smoky. Okay, it's been a few years. A few years since I was in there. It's dark. You can lay back in the corner and be cool. Get a cigarette. Do you smoke? No, but you have to have one to look cool. Mm. Do you have an inhale? Yeah. <coughs> when the lights come on. When the lights come on, everybody begins to say, oh, he's not cool. Look at him. He's just a nerd over there with the choking off a little cigarette. <laughs> I thought he was cool. I thought the light begins to show everything. Nothing can be hid now. The light reveals it. And, and God is showing us that when we had turn on the lights, it begins to show what's really happening. Brothers and sisters, the world needs to see what's really happening. Look at the politics going on. We're not going there. But here John is conf mm, confronting the three claims of these False teachers. <laughs> he says that we have fellowship with God and go on living in spiritual darkness, relying to ourselves. See, the world thinks that we can uh, come to church on Sunday, shout and dance and sing hallelujah, and then go out on Monday and live in sin and, and curse and carry on like the world and, and forget all about what we just said about Sunday until next Sunday and then pick it back up and, oh, praise the Lord, God is good. He says, but that's not true. Because God is light and in him is no darkness at all. There's no shadow of it. God doesn't change. He's not saying, "Woo, Sunday's over. Take off the halos, y'all. Take off the robes. Let's take a break. That's not God. Nor should it be us. Nor should it be us. Neither can we walk in darkness and say that we're children of God. We can't go around and, 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 and just switch like that. And John was trying to get them to understand that God's blood has cleansed us. We have been changed. It cleansed us from all sin. See, in the Old Testament time, they, they went and transferred the sins unto an animal. But it only pushed it back for a while. Because they had to do it again over and over and over. But Jesus did it one time. And he did it right. He did it once and it was for everyone. For all sin. And all we had to do was accept that forgiveness that he did it for us. John said in John chapter 1, Look, behold, the Lamb of God who 
who takes away the sin of the world. Brothers and sisters, we have to remember these things. Because sin, by its very nature, it brings death. And the fact is a certain, uh, that the, the law the, of gravity is as sure as sin is going to bring death. You know, if I drop this mic, it's going to hit the floor. It may break, so I'm not going to drop it as a test to prove it to you. But we know that gravity demands that if I let it go, it's going to fall. Well, some people still aren't understanding that sin is just as sure as gravity. Because the word of God says, the soul that sinners shall surely, I want to make sure everybody knows, shall surely, all right. There's no maybes in there. There's no, there's no glimmer of hope. He said, the soul that sinners shall surely die. Well, if Jesus died for our sins, if he took our place, why would we still die? Why would you still continue to walk in darkness when there's a way, when the lights have been turned on in your life, when God has shown you, come to the light? I just had a, 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 one of the movie attacks in my brain. Go to the light. Go to, don't go to the light. Don't go to the light. You know, whatever. But the light is common, and we need to go and get that light and let that light come in our hearts. Let God begin to show us. <laughs> John chapter 12, Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness... No, if not, whither he goeth. While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be children of the light. These things spake Jesus and depart and hid himself from them. He said, listen, you have the light, but you won't have it always. You know what, brothers and sisters? I, I can only speak of Americans. I'm an American, just in case you didn't know. I can only speak of Americans. We've become, uh, what's the word? Lazy, expectant, and dependent. Everything is going to come my way. When a storm hits and the power is out, oh, man, we're going to have a problem. When are they going to get this power back on? But we spent a little time on the reservation last, yesterday, out there at uh, Tahajali. And you know, every house doesn't have power. Every house doesn't have running water. They, they don't have electricity uh, hooked up in every house, and so... You begin to see the difference. And, and if you're careful and you pay close attention, it should make you appreciate what you have. What we take for granted. We think it's always going to be this way, but as we look around, we start seeing some of our rights and privileges being taken from us. But we're not paying attention. We think we're always going to have the light. We're always going to have the power. We're always going to be Americans. We're big. We're loud. We're Americans. But what happens should America fall? What happens should our liberties be taken? Then what? What will you stand on? Because red, white, and blue won't save your soul. Red, white, and blue won't get you into heaven. I'm not saying that I, I, I have any uh, animosity to, against my country. 
But my real allegiance is in God. See, I, I want you to understand, I want you to recognize that countries come and go and, 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 and regimes rise and fall. But the king of kings, he never changes. The king of kings, he never changes. And you have to put your hope, your trust, your desires in him. He says because the, the light that we have as Americans, we won't have it always. We got to walk in the light, the real light. The light of Jesus Christ. The light that is able to give us peace no matter what. Me no speaky Chinese. I don't even know how to formulate that into. That's kind of my Mexican. I don't speak Chinese. <laughs> I don't speak Russian. But I speak Jesus. And you know, in every language, they know who Jesus is. Isn't that amazing? That's just the power of the light. Every language. You say, praise Jesus. They say, Jesus? Yes. They know. Cristo? We know. There's power. Brothers and sisters, we got to walk in the light. He says, so let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. And Christ is, he's showing us the, the disciples have to walk in a way that the world would want to be closer to him. When they see you, do they see you say, time to go to church? Or do they say, hey, we're going to church, you want to go? Hey, we're going to have, hey, I, I, I go to church every Sunday, I, I go in the morning, and, and, and would you like to ride with me sometime? Because I'm telling you, they're watching your life. They're looking at you. Where do you go every Sunday? I remember I was in Artesia. I was in there, out there in training, and, and uh, I, I didn't know where I was going to go to church, but they, they had some signs, and, and I was looking. I, I wasn't just like some people say, I was just looking for a church. Where were you looking? No, I mean, I was looking for a church. No, where did you look for it at? I mean, I was just thinking about a church, okay? Let's be real, okay? Because you weren't looking for a church because you can't tell me. But I went to the community board and they said, this church has a bus. They'll meet at this time. So I went to the meet spot. And the van showed up and he said, man, we haven't picked anybody up here in a long time. I said, well, sir, I'll be here for eight weeks or ten weeks or however long I was. Can you pick me up? He said, if you're out here, I'll pick you up. And I went to church. And about the third week, the people that were with me in this training class said, where do you go every Sunday morning? What do you do? You get up early on Sunday. That's our day off. What do you do? I said, I go to church. Want to go? They said, you found a black church in Artesia? I said, No. I wasn't looking for a black church, but I found a church. So a couple of them said, well, we're going to go too. The light was shining. Brothers and sisters, that's what he's saying. We have to do this, that they may see our good works, that they might see what God has done in us. That they don't understand. Why would you get up early the one day that you could sleep in? Because I need him. I need my light tuned in. I need to be recharged. Come on, because I know next week darkness is going to try to overtake me. Next week darkness is going to try to run in your life. Going to try to get you to put it under the bushel. And we can't hear you. Okay, I'll bring it back out. <laughs> They're going to try to get you to 
cover it up. Try to get you to deny what God has done. But my God is real. And I want the world to see it. Because I want to glorify my Father, which is in heaven. Now, I know some people. They get the big head. Not me yet, Sister Maria. I know she said, if you get the big head, I'm going to let that air out for you. You see what I did? Everybody was all pumped up. I did that. Everybody was on fire. That was me. Yeah, boy, I had the crowd cheering, everybody. God gets the glory. God did it. God touched hearts. God healed men and women. It was God that began to shine light in the eyes of men and women. They began to see for the very first time how real he is, how powerful he is, how much he loves them. And, and they begin to say, I want that. I want to be a peculiar person. I want to be in that royal priesthood. I want to be different. God, make me different. Oh, glory. God knows what he's doing. Isaiah wrote about it. Come on, Sister Hicks. Isaiah wrote about it. He said, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about, and see all they gather themselves together. They come to thee, thy sons shall come from far, and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. We all, we all have family we want to see. Come to the light. Can I get a witness? We have friends that are struggling. We have loved ones who are lost in sin that are totally lives being destroyed by addiction. Alcoholism, drugs. Come on, marriages are being ripped apart. And we see the distress all around us. And brothers and sisters, we have the light. We ought to be shining in their hearts. We ought to let them know, wait a minute, it does not have to be this way. God is real. And the light that he gave me, he wants to share with you. The peace that he gave me, he wants you to partake in it too. He wants you to experience these liberties. And they may look at you and say, well, I'm not like you. No. I'm like you were. Come on now. My life wasn't perfect. I was lost in sin. I was blinded by the darkness. I was stumbling around and, and making a mess. I didn't know how to be a husband. I didn't know how to be a father. I didn't know how to be a Christian. I didn't really know how to be a man. Come on now. Let's be real with ourselves. Until Jesus got a hold of my heart. Until he began to show me my darkness. Show me how filthy my life was. How thoughtless it was. How destructive. How that hell was my destination. And I was running at full speed. And didn't know where the brakes were. And then the light began to shine in my heart. And God began to say, is this how you want to end it? And it humbled me right to my very core and said, no, I don't want it. I don't want to be just a statistic. I don't want to just be another black man killed in the streets. I don't want to uh, destroy my life. I don't want to see my family destroyed. So he said, come, come unto me, and I will give you rest. As your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, is your light on?
Can others see your light? You may say, Pastor, right now my, my light is growing dim. But there's still a flicker of light. There's still a glimmer of hope because Jesus is right there. First John, he says, if we sin, we can come to him. Come to him and say, Lord, forgive me. Wash me, oh God. Cleanse me and make me whole again. David said, create in me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Don't let anybody deceive you to make you think that that's it. It's all over. The devil is a liar. Your light can shine again if you only tap in, plug in, recharge. The altars are open. Come on. Come on and get some. Come on and let God light your heart. Let him ignite a fire in you. Let him stir it up. Let him stir the coals. You don't have to leave this place the same way. You say, well, I don't want anybody to know. We all need to re recharge. We all need to be encouraged. It's praying time all over the sanctuary. Oh, hallelujah. Come, let us pray. shine this great light of mine I'm gonna let it shine this great light of mine I'm gonna let it shine let it shine let it shine let it shine This great light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, oh, this great light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, this great light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. Oh, I'm going to let it shine. Oh, Jesus gave it to me. And I'm going to let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. All around the world, I'm going to let it shine, oh, all around the world. I'm going to 
gonna let it shine all around the world. I'm gonna let it shine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Because Jesus gave it to me. I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, because Jesus gave it to me. I'm gonna let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. I'm gonna let it shine. I'm gonna let this light shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. This great light of mine. Oh, I'm gonna let it shine. great light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. This great light of mine. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna let it shine. This great light of mine. I'm
Let your light so shine before men. Bless the one. That they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. How many know God is good? I say, how many know that God is good? He's really good. He does all things well. Our little young brother gave his life to Jesus Christ this morning. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. See, the angels in heaven are rejoicing. You know, I'm telling you, the devil's a liar. He makes us think our children will never receive him. But God is real. And at the right time, you keep praying. At the right time. God's going to do it. God's going to bring them out and God's going to raise up. He says, I'm going to raise them up. He, remember what I read here out of Isaiah. Arise and shine for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. And gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee. The Lord is here, amen, and his glory is going to shine, and, and men and women are going to come out of darkness. Keep on letting your light shine, amen. amen. Father, we're so grateful for this chance to be in your house again this morning, grateful for your moving of your spirit. Continue to bless. Lord, continue to lead, guide, and direct us, oh God. Keep your hand upon us and bring us back at the appointed time. Lord, we'll be careful and sure to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said amen. Amen. God bless you. Consider yourselves dismissed. We love you. Tonight, 6.30, we'll be back. Midweek service, Wednesday at 6.30. Amen.